we could all do with getting smarter. Hi, I'm Abby, and today we're going to look at the mindset theory that's creating exceptional kids. Unstop Unstoppable. Do you think you're born with all the smarts you will ever have? Or that you can get smarter over time? It may sound like a silly question, but many kids are not aware of the power of their own brains. Using the mindset theory developed by Carol Dweck, a professor of psychology at Stanford University, educators have been able to transform the performance of some of the most chronically underachieving students. When taught the growth mindset, elementary school students on a Native American reservation went from being consistently in the bottom 5% in the state to leading the district. Made up of 90% minority students, the first grade and kindergarten students outperform the rich Microsoft kids in oral reading fluency. Well, 17% of students in the Sierra Unified School District are Native American. Officials say the establishment of a mentored-based Native American program is not only increasing graduation rates, but resulting in more students being college ready. So what is the mindset theory? Dr. Carol Dweck in her work identified two types of mindsets. She defined the fixed mindset as the belief that talent, intelligence, and abilities are fixed. That is, we each have a certain amount and that's it. While the growth mindset is the belief that we can grow our abilities, grow our intelligence and grow our talent through effort, strategy and input from others. New research shows that the brain can be developed like a muscle. Every time we push out of our comfort zone to learn something new and difficult, the neurons in our brain fire up and form new connections, and over time, we get smarter. The mindsets differ in three main ways. Number one, goals. For those in the fixed mindset, their primary goal is to look and feel smart at all times. And to most of all, never look dumb. They avoid tasks that may expose a deficiency and make statements like, I like schoolwork best when I can do it perfectly and without any mistakes the first time. However, students in the grow mindset say their number one goal is learning. They make statements like, I like schoolwork that makes me think hard and it's more important to me to learn new things than to get the best grades. Because they engage so effectively with the learning process, they end up getting the best grades. Number two, attitude towards effort. In the fixed mindset, if you have ability, you should not need effort. If you need effort, especially a lot of effort, it is a sign that you lack ability. Done. Who wrote the Bill of Rights? Thomas Jefferson. What is the name of Neptune's moon? Triton. What kind of triangle has isosceles? Gastroid. The medulla oblongata. That's incredible. No! I am sorry, my mentor. I have failed you. <laughs> <laughs> In the fixed mindset, learning should come naturally. Whereas in the growth mindset, effort activates ability. They understand that even geniuses have to work hard to get their great discoveries. Number three response to failure and setbacks. Those with a fixed mindset believe that setbacks and failures measure you and reveal your fixed ability. As such, they try to hide their failures, conceal their mistakes and avoid deficiencies. The fixed mindset runs from errors. In the growth mindset, mistakes and failures are a natural part of the learning process. They recognize that making mistakes is what happens when you take on challenges. They capitalize on mistakes and confront their deficiencies. So what happens when we adopt the growth mindset? 
last year, I got a letter from a 13-year-old boy. He said, Dear Professor Dweck, I read your book. Or read it. <laughs> I like the fact that it was based on sound scientific research. That's why I decided to test out your growth mindset principles in three areas of my life. As a result, I'm earning higher grades. I have a better relationship with my parents. I have a better relationship with the other kids at school. I realize I've wasted most of my life. Beyond the classroom, the growth mindset has now been tested and adopted by many business and sport leaders with similar results. So which category are you in? Which of these mindsets do your children have? The bad news is that we all have both mindsets to varying degrees. You can have a growth mindset in one area and a fixed mindset in another area. But the good news is, we can all make that change from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. In our next video, we'll look at how to teach your kids the growth mindset, starting with why you need to stop telling your children that they are clever. To grab a copy of the best-selling book, Mindset, by Dr. Carol Dwerb, see the link in the description box below. It's got great reviews on Amazon, and it comes highly recommended. So what do you guys think? Which areas do you struggle the most with a fixed mindset? Or maybe you think the growth mindset is not always the best option? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Would love to hear from you. Lastly, if you got value out of this, click the like button, subscribe and turn on notification to be informed when the second part of this video is posted. Click the discussion tab on this channel to join our 2020 reading challenge. I'm Abby, thanks for watching.